Hello everyone, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we're going to do a fast and loose watercolor painting, experimenting with a triad. The triad is going to be Thalo Green, Cornacridone Rose, we've used those two as a two color palette before, and we're going to add raw umber to that. Adding raw umber to it to see uh, what type of darks we get with it. I used it in my last triad and I felt like it was kind of a mixing color. So I figured let's follow suit and see how that, that helps. You know, mixing to get uh, ultramarine darker. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to take the hake brush and jump right into it. I have kind of a scene in mind, but we're going to make it up as we go along. This is 11 by 14, a quarter sheet, so 11 by 15. Stonehenge Aqua, 140 pound cold press, 100% cotton. And this fast and loose approach is adopted from two sources. Uh, Ron Ranson with the Hake brush and Stuart Davies and other tonalists, oil painters, who will mix their oils, get it nice and soupy, and just let it flow onto the palette, uh, onto the painting, and wipe on and wipe off. My Hake is uh, about three years old now, so it's starting to shed quite a bit. see what happens. I envisioned a scene that would be uh, kind of closer to the viewer, more of a forest interior, but with this approach it's really fun just to let loose and put paint in there. Now, I saturated the paper with water, and I apply a lot on top of it, so what I'm doing is just flattening out the paper. You'll see how we have it pooling in this spot, which some people like the effect whenever it dries like that, but you want to be uh, careful of cauliflower effects and other things. With this back and forth, we haven't really wiped back that much. You can, if you want, come in with the paper towel and lift up those spots. And if you want to add water back into it, you can come back into it with a hake. But I think we'll do our brightest whites right there. We'll do water reflection here. I wind up um, making up imaginary scenes that wind up looking like each other. I guess we fall into a pattern. So I'm going to try to break that pattern today. And right now I'm just pushing pigment around. Getting ideas. Now would be a time to grab that raw umber and let's see how it mixes. In the past, I believe I've used burnt umber in this mix. And the burnt umber kind of naturalizes the phthalo, phthalo um, green. It just makes it look more natural, like a sap green. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, sap green is a mixture of those. And I wonder if we're going to see the effect with the raw umber. Raw umber is a cooler brown. And usually if I use raw umber at all, 
I use it in the background of a um, oil painting of a still life or something like that. But here, it seems like it's sitting forward in the picture plane. I think with color theory, it's relative. It's um, relational to the context. It also might just be my imagination and how I'm viewing this. Okay. Now, the only bad thing about this technique is that you're using paint straight from the tube and you wind up using a large quantity of the paint and the pigment. But fortunately, uh, quinacridone rose and uh, phthalo green are, are cheap pigments. I have them in Da Vinci brand and Van Gogh brand. So you could buy a tube, I think, for like $3 that size. Three to four. Cotman brand should have them. Who else would have them in that price? Those are the three I would look at, um, especially the, the thing is with um, pigment, with paints, beginners should be experimental. You should explore and paint and throw pigment on there. Um, the more practice, the better. So, you know, uh, to a point, you know, if you're kind of burnt out and you're not enjoying it, it might not be worth it. But, you know, practice definitely helps. And if you buy expensive, expensive paints, expensive pigments, you might be reluctant to, to paint, to use it. So just keep that into consideration in mind whenever purchasing paints. The Cotman, the Van Gogh, Da Vinci brands, can't go wrong with any three of those. The price points are great. I think I've never seen it for sale, um, but I think it's Russian brand, White Knights. If you know which one I'm talking about, um, mention in the comments below. I've heard that that's a good one. I don't know if the prices are low on that one, but it might be worth looking into if you're in places that don't have the three that I mentioned. Or if you know of another cheap paint that's worth looking into price-wise, um, let me know in the comments below. All right, so this paint area is quite wet. So when I'm scraping, it's black backfilling. So it's just making dark lines. So I'm gonna try to get a wider line to push out. My last painting played a lot with the small textures that you can create with the card. And hopefully that's shown up on camera. My hand might be in the way. something here. I'll come back in in a bit, but that'll help me start getting that area going. So this is pretty bold stuff that I don't usually do. However, um, that's what I wanted interior elements. So let's just go right into it. Let's scrape out some trees right there. Usually we do a dry off, but it's all about experimenting and having fun. I 
I could take the paper towel and it has a nice delicate softness to it back there. I don't really want to disturb it that much. But the mid-ground, add a little tonal variety by lifting with the paper towel. Little ideas. And we're going to come back in with pigment in a bit. Areas that have been scraped, I mentioned it earlier, will potentially backfill. You can see how we get that darker line right along the edge just because of that scraping. So scraping does do some sort of damage to the paper, but um, you know, so just keep that in mind. Putting out a little bit more of that raw umber. So we're gonna try to get this, these trees to pop out against that background. So far that's not really happening. We'll do a dry off and we'll attempt in the next step. A little bit semi dry brush to get a little bit of texture back here. Just darken this corner. I'm going to pause the camera, we're going to do a dry off, and we'll take a look and see how things lighten up whenever it dries. Okay, so after the dry off, you can see that it lightened up quite a bit, but the harsh marks, the scrapes with the card, um, left dark areas. So that's something to uh, just take note of, that you get that backfill that could take place and you get those dark marks. So I'm going to use the number four rigger. The reason I use the number four is that I feel it just holds a little bit more pigment and lasts a little bit longer than the number one. So it makes things a little easier for me rather than having to go back and forth. And I try to use calligraphy type, type strokes, um, dry brush effects to put it out just so it's not a straight line. Use the side of the brush, use the heel of the brush. Get all those textures there. Grab some of that raw umber. Let's see how that looks over it. So, we'll observe while doing this, that I enjoy the th uh, thalo blue and the quinacridone rose together. The raw umber works well with this combination so far. It does seem to add a uh, depth to it, so I like that. And I think I had mentioned burnt umber earlier, yeah, how it had added oh, more of a um, naturalizing type effect. Here I put in some straight phthalo green, you can see how it looks um, unnatural. So the earth, earth tones will seem to help with that. Let's see. Just making my gestural marks. building up these textures and drop the brush right here so we'll bring foliage out over that there we go I want variation in this so some raw umber there 
some Quinn Rose, vary the densities. Textures in the foreground. Now with this effect, um, we noted in a earlier video that the age of the hake brush does play into account um, the textures that you can get out of them. And people have noted different brands can give you different uh, textures. So if you're following along and you can't get those same textures as me, um, don't despair. Just know that you know it, it, it might be what you're working with, but it might also just be that it's brand new, the Hague. So you'll find your way to use yours. I haven't been able to get these tree trunks to really pop forward. I'm gonna try the raw umber and the fallow green and see what type of dark that gives. Kind of like how I mentioned at the beginning, I use the raw umber with ultramarine to kind of darken the ultramarine. I feel like this whole area, it's an imaginary scene, but this whole area would be darker. You can scrape texture out in a moment. You can bring foliage up the side. Let me pause for a second. Okay. Looking at it through the phone, which I'm filming with, I do seem to have some nice darks. So hopefully that'll stay once we dry off. Um, Scraping these textures in. Just really having fun with it. I might have to re wet some of these areas. I simply do that by just taking the hake and coming in with it. Hick is pretty dry at the moment. There we go, we can plot a little bit more white. Just adding a little different densities in those areas. would benefit from some thinner trunks coming up. I don't know if I mentioned, but you are more than welcome to follow along with anything that I do. These kind of um, tonalist push the paint around ones might be a little bit hard to follow along with, but that might be more beneficial to you since they're impossible to rep replicate like completely so you'll have to loosen up and have fun with it and then from there you'll develop your own style or you have your own style and you might just be wanting to experiment with different things and that's fine too
raw umber. Kind of landing on thick right there. This is the point where the hake really doesn't have much moisture in it. And if we want, we can grab the number one rigger to get nice thin lines. You see how I'm just holding it kind of upright and let it inflict. Just letting those lines happen. Yeah, you are more than welcome to follow along. If you do, I'd love to see your results. Tons of different social media below for you to um, tag me in or shoot me a message. And you have my permission to sell anything you do whenever you follow one of my videos. I want you guys to be successful and Unfortunately, we, we talked about the price of pigment earlier. Um, these brands are on the cheaper end, and they'll last a long time. But you know, selling artwork is a way to help pay for paint. Also, giving artwork away is nice. I'm a school teacher, so I don't really have much money to like donate to charities, but I could do a painting donate it and then somebody else can buy that painting and that money from somebody else can go to the charity let's do a dry off see where we're at pause this real quick all right so did a quick dry off um, there's a few things that I want to work on also experiment that I want to do on it not so much an experiment because I did it Last time I used my two color combination, but I'll get to that in a moment. First thing is, I don't like how bright this is down here. I want to kind of tie my tones in a little bit closer. Now, one of the things I've noticed like looking at master landscape paintings, um, Hudson River Valley paintings, um, the foreground will have a lot of detail and texture in it. However, it will also uh, be very tonally tied together unless there's maybe a dark trunk or something like that, tree trunk popping out or a figure there. But everything is kind of close together and I think that gives you the idea of a lot of stuff taking place but it doesn't cause your eye to stop and sit in the foreground and not enter the painting so I believe that's why that's throwing me off a little bit here the other thing that I want to do last time I played with uh, Thalo Green and Quinn Rose I splattered a little bit of water on it and did some lifting and it gave it very nice I would say like a moth fairy effect willow willow the wisp it's like we'll splatter some water and I'll show you what I mean and it surprised me how the green had lifted so easily it's, um, I believe the green is a staining color but for some reason we're able to get decent lifting to take place getting a little bit of that effect
see what happened good right there. So let me um, let me get a little bit more aggressive with that. We'll pick a location like right here. Then we'll lay our paper flat, paper towel. Just pull up some texture. There we go. It's kind of like little bugs, little um, moths, or like I said, fairies or something, kind of floating around. I think larger, aggressive droplets as opposed to the finer mist pull up easier. Also maybe giving it a moment to sit, sit there and kind of work its magic. If I do have some across the top, that might allow me to come back in, go a little bit darker as well. So I could get some highlights like that. And I can mix my raw umber and green, come in for another dark area. probably do a dry off in a second and then sign it and see how it looks hopefully this inspires you to go out and paint it's funny how uh, you'll watch something and it'll inspire you to go do something I'm not saying I'm inspiring or anything like that but when we were in high school, we would watch videos of skateboarding and then go outside and skateboard. Um, I'm sure people will watch videos of sports and soccer stars, and then want to go outside and kick the ball around. Okay, let's do our dry off and we'll sign it and see how it looks. All right, so I hope you enjoyed. Um, please like, subscribe, follow. If you want to support this channel, I have a Patreon, which you can check out. I do have exclusive content on there. Down below, I have other links for other ways to uh, support and donate. If you're not able to financially donate, that's fine. Just like I said, simply liking and subscribing or leaving a comment. Let me know what you think. I'd really appreciate it. Let's pull out the camera. And there we go. All right, have a great day. I'll talk to y'all soon.